Hello and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab. Today I'm going to show you how to take a GoTech, set it up as an external drive on an Amiga 500, and keep the internal disk drive completely functional. So what exactly is a GoTech? It's a floppy disk drive emulator. This looks somewhat like a floppy disk drive, especially on the computer side. So here's a pretty standard connector and some power connector. In the front, instead of having an opening for putting in disks, what we have is a USB connector. So here we can put a USB drive and it will interpret the contents as different disks. These two buttons let us change disk images forward and backwards. And initially it comes with a very simple numerical display telling you which image is currently selected. So the inside is even simpler. You can see it's just pretty much all the logic is there. And this is an add-on, the display. And this is about it. It's super lightweight. And you can get GoTeks very, very inexpensively. I think they are around 15, 20 euros. So the reason I decided to make this video is because when you Google on the internet how to hook up a GoTech to an Amiga 500, what you're going to find most of the time is how to replace the internal disk drive with a GoTech. Now that's totally fine, but I prefer to leave my hardware as close as possible to the original. When I realized that there was the possibility of setting up the GoTech as an external disk drive and leave the Amiga completely how it was natively, I really like that idea. So this is my favorite way to set up the Amiga 500. Now this is a basic GoTech model the way it just came. So it's not the most friendly thing in the world because it just has a numerical display here and nothing else. I like to upgrade my GoTex to something like this. So this is very similar to the one we just saw, except that I've replaced the numerical display with an actual OLED display. So this is a lot friendlier because it will write the text of the disk image that is currently selected. And then the other upgrade that this has is a piezo buzzer. So that actually makes a buzzing noise as the floppy disk drive emulator is you know, supposedly accessing things or, or maybe it's like the seeking um, that the normal drive would do and it makes a little noise. So that feedback makes it feel a lot more like a real floppy disk drive. If you're interested in this kind of mod, let me know down in the comments and maybe I can make a whole video on my process and maybe some of my other favorite add-ons for the GoTech. The Amiga 500 has a port in the back clearly labeled disk drive. So you'd think it would be an easy matter to get a cable that connects to that port on one end and to the GoTech on the other end, and we're all set. Well, not quite. First of all, an external drive on the Amiga 500 needs to have its own disk controller. So we need some circuitry between the Amiga 500 and the GoTech. Then the GoTech needs to be powered up, and the data cable doesn't carry any power, so we need another cable getting the power to the GoTech. That ends up being rather messy. So my preferred solution is to start with an external floppy disk drive. So here's the external floppy disk drive. So as you can see, this is a real floppy disk drive, not an emulator. And it comes with a nice, pretty hefty case. All the controller circuitry is inside. And then it comes with a cable with the correct connector and everything. And then in the back, this might be maybe to chain another disk drive, I'm not really sure. And I guess you can turn it on and off. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up, take out this floppy disk drive and put in the GoTech floppy disk drive emulator. So as you can see, the connectors are the same. This is the data connector, and this is the power connector. They just fit right there. You need to put it in this case first, like so. The GoTek even has the screw holes in the right position. And that's it. This fits right in there. And so we can just go ahead and plug it into the Amiga and test it out. We plug it in the back. 
We put in a USB drive with disk images. We turn it on, making sure the workbench disk image is selected and nothing happens. So the reason that didn't work is because the Amiga can have multiple drives connected, but by default it's set up so it boots up from the first drive, which is DF0. It's not as convenient, but we could try booting up the workbench from floppy disk and then running our game from the external disk drive, except that this is what happens. A lot of games in order to work need to boot up directly from the disk. So for this to be useful, we really need to set up the GoTek as the first drive, as DF0. The Amiga 500 has two chips that control the input and output. These are the CIA chips. There's an odd CIA and an even CIA. Specifically, the even CIA, among other things, controls the drive select. So it has two signals, one that enables drive zero or DF zero, and one that enables DF1. What we need to do is some way to swap them around or even better, being able to toggle them back and forth. So sometimes DF0 is sent to the external drive and sometimes DF0 is sent to the internal drive. We could probably accomplish this by using a couple of sockets, kind of like what we did several videos ago when we adapted an EEPROM to fit into the Commodore 64 ROM. But it would probably be a little messy connecting all those pins and adding the switch. So in this particular case, I prefer to buy a pre-made adapter, which I bought from eBay and I think they're still available there. They're not very expensive and they're nice and compact and they work really well and they even come with a switch already. The even CIA is the one that controls the floppy disk drive and the selection between DF0 and DF1. And that's all the way under the ribbon here. So I'm just going to disconnect those to get good access to it. There we go. So this is the one and here is the adapter that we want to put in its place. Let's confirm that the adapter does what we expect it does. So first we need to orient ourselves. These are the notches, so this is pin one. So pins, this is pin 13 and this is pin 14, which is good because these are the two pins that you see there are some tracks that go away from them. So in this position, I'm touching pin 13 of the socket and pin 13 of the adapter, and there's a connection there and expect the same thing would happen in pin 14. Yes, exactly. So now if I switch, the if I toggle the switch now, pin 14 and 14 are not connected, but it should be with pin 13, exactly, and then pin 13 and 14. There we go. Okay, so that's exactly what we thought it would do. Now as far as the switch, we need some way to bring this switch out of the case to be able to toggle it back and forth. This case, fortunately, already has a switch right back here. Let's see. Let's see if we can show it right there. And that is used for this memory expansion that allows us to toggle between fast RAM and chip RAM, I believe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I really like the, how inobtrusive it is, that hole back there. I'm usually not a fan of modifying cases, but this is such a small, tiny hole and it's totally hidden out of the way. So I'm just gonna reuse that hole. So we're gonna disconnect this and pass our new switch for the adapter through there. And for that, I think I'm going to have to remove the flap of this drive because the cables are going underneath. And this gives us full access to the switch. So temporarily, we're just going to tape this here until I swap it out for another memory expansion that doesn't have a switch. And I'm just taping it to prevent it from shorting with the metal parts. All right, the switch is nicely installed. So let's take out the CIA and put in the adapter. So we need to make sure we get the right orientation. 
So here are the notches and the notches there. So it needs to go like this. And then the CIA goes right inside. Now we need to put the drive back together and assemble everything. Let's turn on the Amiga. And right now it's trying to boot up from DF0, which is the internal disk drive, and nothing happens. There's no disk in there. Now I toggle the switch, and right away it starts booting up from the external disk drive. In this case, it's loading Defender of the Crown. Notice that it's taken as long to load as it would from a normal floppy disk, and this is because this is a true emulator. It's not trying to speed up the loading process, it's taking just as long as it would take on a real drive. This one in particular is a two-disk game, and it's asking to put in the second disk. All I have to do is press the button on the GoTech, and it switches to the next disk image. And there you go, it all loaded up just fine. As an example of the power of keeping both the internal and external drives working, is that you can use copy programs and copy back and forth from a real floppy disk to a disk image and vice versa. So in this particular case, I'm setting up Xcopy and I can select the source drive and the destination drive and there is zero and one and then perform a full copy. In this case, I'm copying a disk image of Defender of the Crown into a floppy disk. So there you go. That was pretty straightforward, and I hope it will serve you as a guide if you decide to set up your Amiga 500 in the same way. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, as usual, and subscribe to the channel. Until next video, see you then.